Hello and welcome to Committee and Field in Holliston, Massachusetts on Friday, September 21st for SportFuse award-winning production of Holliston Panther Football 2018. It's found only on HCAT TV. Tonight, the Panthers face Tri-Valley League rivals, the Westwood Wolverines, on a Panther homecoming. My name is Tom Emmons, and alongside is the color man who was the clocker homecoming king to legend, Jay Wyman. Jay, there's a lot of energy at the field tonight for two teams that both have their eyes on winning the Tri-Valley League Large this year. What do you expect to see out here tonight? All right, first of all, fake news. I was not the homecoming king. <laughs> Let's get that out of the way. This should, this should really be a, a good fight here tonight, Tom. Um, both these teams, are, as you said, they're looking to uh, rule this division. Uh, the winner of this game is going to have a leg up going into the, uh, the state playoffs. So there's a lot at stake here tonight. Now, Holliston drew a bye last week. They, you know, they came off a really nice game with Norton with a defense really shined and, it, and the offense came through uh, when needed. And, uh, you know, uh, Westwood's played a couple games. They played North Quincy last week and, and took a loss there. But I really think tonight you're going to see two teams, a really hard-hitting game. Can't predict the score, can't predict if one team's going to pull away from the other, but I can tell you the prediction tonight is going to be a lot of hard-hitting. The Holliston Panthers come into this game, as you mentioned, Jay, with a record of 1-0. and Last year they were 5-5 five and five on the season, averaging 23 points on the offense, giving up just 18 on the defense. Their head coach, Todd Kiley, in his 16th season with the Panthers, his career record is 130 wins, 42 losses, 75% winning percentage. The Panthers are 44-7 and seven here at Comedian Field since 2009. The Westwood Wolverines have a record of one and one. They won their first game against Pembroke 32 to nothing, and then lost last week to North Quincy 14 to seven. Last year, the Wolverines were three and eight, averaging 23 points on the offense, giving up 29 on the defense. Their head coach is Brad Pindell in his second season with the Wolverines. His record is four and nine. Well, last year, you know, uh, Holliston kind of had their way with, with uh, Westwood in both games they played. They play, obviously, during the season here, um, leading up to the playoffs. And then, of course, they, they played their Thanksgiving Day rivalry, which I'm still trying to get them to change so they can play Milford. So Holliston plays Milford on Thanksgiving. But. Blasphemy. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you now please rise. Stand silently for just a moment of reflection and respect. On September 9th, Daniel James Lynch lost his life tragically in a motorcycle accident. Daniel Lynch was a corporal in the United States Marine Reserves and a veteran of Operation African Lion, serving as the 125th Alpha Company's team leader. Daniel Lynch was the older brother of our Sam Lynch of the Holliston football family. We ask that you Keep the Lynch family in your thoughts and prayers and observe this moment of silence in his memory. Now, if you would remain standing, please join the Holliston High School Band under the direction of Dr. Jack Rossini as we honor America with the National Anthem. Cats on board statistician Carlos Canto with Los's pregame lowdown. Thanks, Tom. 
You know, this has been a pretty even rivalry over the last five years, with Holliston holding a slim 6-5 to five lead in the series over the Wolverines. That does include regular season playoff and Thanksgiving Day games. And you'd think, as with most rivalry games, that the home team would have the upper hand, but that's not the case here. In the last five uh, years, the road team has held a 7-4 to four advantage in the series, outscoring the home team 302-268. to 268. In fact, the road team has won the last five out of six games in this series. The Panthers have won the last three in a row, however, and they'll look to continue that streak tonight. The temperature on the field at kickoff, a pleasant 65 degrees with overcast skies. Really nice night for football. And meteorologist, thanks, Los. Todd, Todd Kiley's record against the Wolverines is 11 and 11. Todd Kiley, a proud graduate of the Holliston Panther class of 1989, and the Westwood coach, Brad Pendell, a proud member of the Westwood graduating class of 1989. So they I faced each other on know. the field, Pendell getting the best of Todd Kiley's three varsity years, uh, two wins to one. The story within the story. That's you don't get that anywhere else, folks. Holliston beat the the Wolverines twice last year. That's the second time they've done it in their history. The first time was 2010. And here's the opening kick. Bounced around, picked up at the 25 yard line, and a short return by number 14. that one. Brian Gary. About the 23 yard line. So Panthers first, first and 10 down, at the 27 yard line. They're coming out in the war offense right off the bat. Are they? Oh no, I guess they're not. They're going to spread. Matt Arbonitis will bring them out. Matt Arbonitis, number six, the quarterback. Arbonitis last week, eight of 17 for 205 yards and three touchdowns. The handoff is to fake to Benson, and nice fake, and Arvanitis is off to the races. And he runs out of bounds into Wolverine territory at the 42-yard line. You're going to see a lot out of this kid tonight. I really like the way he plays quarterback. Come. Very, very smart. That's the person you're going to understand about uh, Matt Arvanitis. He has really, really great football intelligence. He throws a nice pass, really nice pass. He leads his, his guys and, and gives line. them a pass they can catch. And he can run out of, out of a play like that. That's going to open up a lot for this offense. First and 10 for the Panthers. Handoff is to Benson. He's through the line and slices inside the 30 to the 25 yard line. And for the second play in a row, that offensive line from Holliston that is just so good and has been so good in this early part of the season is just kind of blowing away uh, Western on these first couple plays. Holliston quick to the line with a double tight end formation. And Benson tripped up at the line of scrimmage for no gain, second and 10. Tristan Benson last week was nine, nine rushes for 45 yards. Last year, he had a 5.0 average with 200 yards rushing and three touchdowns for the Panthers. Now switching in at the running back spot, number 22, junior Dylan Ibbotson. Actually a loss on the play, second and 12. Fake handoff to Ibbotson, pitch to Billy Nash, number two. He's knocked out of bounds as he crosses the 25. That was run really nicely, and you see, even when he's pitching out like that, Avenitis led Billy Nash perfectly, so Billy was able to catch the ball on the run and pick up a few yards there for a third down. Up front for the Panthers, number 57, Will Crowley, number 50, Sam Lynch, number 72, Scott Elliott, number 55, Zach Athey, number 54, Ryan Burchard is your center. So third down and seven for the Panthers. Arvanitis fires to his left, complete! Up the sideline goes Nash, pushed out of bounds inside the 10. It'll be first and goal. One of the things you see at Westwood a lot, Westwood seems to always like to blitz a lot. They're very, very aggressive on, on defense, which, oh, by the way, I love. But they keep coming in, and when you get a kid like Matt Avenitis, who has both the, the intelligence and the, the, um, the football intelligence and the ability to move with his feet like that, what happens is it opens that field up and uh, opens his receivers. Nice, nice pass, nice catch. Panthers go to war. Ibbotson to the left, Zindelet to the right. 
Zach Athey's the fullback, pitch to Dezindelet. He follows number 72, and he's in for a touchdown, Panthers! Anthony Dezindelet with his fourth touchdown of the season, and the Panthers are on the board with 9.33 to go in the first quarter. Well, nice job there, and of course, that, again, except for one play, that offensive line just absolutely dominated down there and uh, did a really nice job. 9.33 left to go in this first quarter as Hollison looks to uh, extend the lead to 7 to nothing. Connor Mulvaney's kick is up and just wide. So at 9.33 to go in the first quarter, the Panthers complete a 75-yard opening drive and lead the Wolverines 6 to nothing. Very impressive drive. This is exactly the way they started off against Norton, too. They, uh, as I said, they had a tremendous first half against Norton, both offensively, defensively, and special teams. And right here, this offense kind of picked up where they left off there. Great mix of uh, run and pass for the Panthers already, Jay. Last week, last week uh, the the Wolverines going against Northern uh, uh, North Quincy gave up 145 yards rushing to uh, Win Tran, who was a great little running back for uh, for the North Quincy team. So. Westwood did have trouble against the run. Yeah, and you know, that, that's one of the things when you're that aggressive and blitzing, if you, you can get caught with a lot of openings, especially as, you, as you, the blitz comes in on one side or the other, and sometimes it opens up a lot of spacing, and a good runner can take advantage of that. Mulvaney's kick taken at the 15-yard line. Number 22 on the return, knocked out of bounds. Westwood will be set up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Westwood, again, one and one. Big win against Pembroke, opening night 32 to nothing, but then a 14 to seven setback last week. Their, their quarterback is number three, Jake Plaff, junior quarterback who was a linebacker last year. In his first two games, he's 22 completions, 44 attempts, 298 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. Tailback is number 34, Colin Fay. Plaff throws across the middle, caught, completed out at the 45-yard line to number two. Senior captain John Hannon. That was a nice job. That was a nice throw, a nice catch by Hannon. And he had, um, Geist was all over him in, in great uh, defensive position there. But the ball was thrown into a real small window. Very nicely done by the, Hollis, uh, the uh, Westwood quarterback. Hannon with four catches for 35 yards and a touchdown on the season. Ball's at the Westwood 45. Plapp with the handoff to Fay. Big hit. After a two-yard gain, nice hit by number 24, Mitch Gimblet. Well, what happened there was Hollison came with a, a like a blitz up the middle. It made, forced the runner off to the left-hand side, and Gimblet was there to uh, finish them off. So second down and seven for the Wolverines. This is a, a well-coached, very athletic, fast, and very good defense in the Hollison has this year. Number 24, Shamar Hall in it at tailback. Handoff to number seven, and he is tossed down for a big loss. Again, number 24, Gimblet with the tackle. Well, if, coach, if you're a coach out there and you have a young team and you want to teach those kids how to contain or those defensive ends or those, those outside backers, whichever you want to call them, if you want them to contain, you want them to do exactly what Gimblet did there. He came in, turned the, turned the play inside, back in the backfield and was able to wrap and did a nice form tackle. Very nicely done all the way around by Mitch Gimlet. Third and 15, starting defense for the Panthers, number 57, Will Crowley, 72, Scott Elliott, number 51, David Harding, number 77, Chris O'Connell up front. Number four, Connor Mulvaney and 32, Kevin Lyons are your middle linebackers. Dylan Ibbotson, the outside linebacker. Number 26, Christian Schneelock, and number 17, 
Sean Keast are your cornerbacks with Naughton and Gimblet at the safety. We've got timeout on the field with 7.32 to go in the first quarter. If you know Hollison at all and you know Coach Athey, who coaches the defense here, he, he's in a perfect spot to blitz. Let's see if he sends somebody. Anthony Dezindel in at cornerback, locked up with Lenane, number six. Plaff rolls to his left. Fires complete right at the first down marker where he's knocked out of bounds by Keast. Let's see what they call it. looks like he's going to be short of the first down. And it's going to be fourth down and one, but the Wolverines have moved into Panther territory. That was a really nice play. Nice rollout. And Plaff does a getting... lot of scrambling. He can, he can roll. He got, he's rushed for 40 yards in the first game against Pembroke. Like last year, Westwood's had most of their success on the oh, ground. Oh, oh. In the air, and they went with the quarterback sneak, and that was snuffed out by Gimblet. And uh, also 72, Scott Elliott. Well, that's the wrong person to try to sneak the ball against. Well, yeah, if you're going to, there's, there's maybe two kids in the state who you don't want to sneak the ball against. One place for Hollis and one place for Milford. So the Panthers with the ball at their own 47. 7.18 to go in the first quarter. Panthers up six to nothing after the Zindelet touchdown. That was a nice job, as you notice, what happened when the quarterback came, came up in, out of the shotgun and in, into the regular formation. Those linebackers snuck in a little bit, and they were able to, uh, along with the defensive line, they were able to con control the, uh, the, uh, the, the offensive line. From, um, Hand off to Benson, right side. He's across midfield to the 49, a gain of four. Coming up on seven minutes left in the first quarter, Holliston leading six to nothing. Scored on their first drive, and they're on the march again. Number five, Dezindelet spread to the split to the right. Henry Norton, number 11, to the left, as well as number two, Billy Nash. Arvanitis comes to the screen to, oh, to exactly. Ibbotson, and that is snuffed out for a loss on the play. Dom Hoff, Dom Hoff on that play. Boy, th that is exactly how you play. I mean, the, the offensive line did a nice job of, of letting that defensive line, uh, defensive front, six of the seven come in. But uh, Huff kind of smelled that out pretty quickly, and he realized what was happening. He got right on the receiver and made a nice tackle. Give Hollison for a loss. So third down and eight for the Panthers. Arvanitis fakes it left, comes back to the right. Incomplete. And that's going to bring up fourth down and long. Six minutes to go in the first quarter. And Coach Kiley calls for his punt team. Topher Ryan, number 10, the punter. Dropping back number seven, Dylan Mahoney for the Wolverines. Ryan's kick comes down at the 20, takes a Panther bounce inside the 10. And Westwood is gonna be backed up at their own Four yard line to start this drive with 5.44 to go in the first quarter. Panthers up six to nothing. Nice punt by Tofa to get the ball there and get it inside not only the, the 20, but inside the 10 and then inside the five as the ball rolls dead at the four yard line. 5.50, 5.44 left to go in this first quarter. Max Preps has the Panthers rated number 44 in Massachusetts. Danny V has them ranked as the fourth best team in Division 5 South so far. Westwood coming in at number 128, when Danny V has them at number six in Division Four. Well, this Division Five South is just absolutely loaded. So being number four in Division Five South is a very good place to be. 
Claff in his own end zone to receive the snap. Hall to his right. Handoff is to Hall. He bulls his way forward for a couple of yards. Second down. Shamar Hall last season rushed for 196 yards and four touchdowns. So far on the season, he's been the workhorse for Westwood. 37 carries, 135 yards, a 3.6 average, and a pair of touchdowns. Yeah, when you get down this this end of the field, Tom, and you're that deep in, in, into your own territory, that's the guy you want to key on if you're the Hollison defense, especially on first and second down. Second down and six for Westwood. Hand up is to Hall again. Off the left side, picks up another couple. Bring up a third down. Third and three for Westwood. Third and about three. Chris Hollison here, you have to be careful. You want to you want to be aggressive and you you want to, you know, go in and make the tackle and get the get the ball back on a punt. But you want to be a little bit aggressive, uh, a little bit careful down here because you don't want somebody to break it for a long uh, run. You want to contain the quarterback too. You don't want him to get to the outside. Westwood is 14 of 28 on third down for 50 percent. Pretty good percentage for Westwood. Plaff, short job, push from the pocket. He's in trouble. Sneaks away from one Panther. Now he's in the end zone, shovels it forward, but that's a lineman. Yeah, and that's a penalty that's in the end zone. That will be a, should be a safety, I believe. It's a penalty in the end zone. Dylan Ibbotson. Let's see what the call is here. You're right, Jay. If that was a... Illegal forward pat, intentional grounding, and it's in the end zone for a safety. So the Panthers' lead goes to eight to nothing at 3:50 to go in the first quarter. Well, that's that's what I was saying. You want to you want to be very careful in containing him. He's you know Plaff. He's a good good runner. He can get outside quickly. But Holliston did a nice job of containing left, containing right making him go, go back into the end zone, and then uh, Hollison finished him off back there. And uh, actually, it, it wasn't a legal forward pass, but the fact of the matter is he would have been tackling the end zone anyway. Right. Well, Plaff's a great athlete. You can see how, how, how nimble he is to get away from the Panther rush there. I saw some of that on film in Pembroke and a little bit in North Quincy. You know, he's, yeah. he's a great athlete. you got to keep your eyes on him. He'll, he'll get some yards quick on you. Right. And that's the thing, like, like you said, you want to stay away from those quick scores. You know, Hollison now is going to get the ball back in uh, an excellent field position. Now, last week, as you pointed out, Jay, in, Nor in the Norton game, Holliston held Norton to around 100 yards before that last drive, desperation drive, which ended up in a Henry Norton 90-yard 90, 90 interception right. return for a touchdown as time expired. Very dramatic. But the defense came up big last year, that last week, uh, two weeks ago, excuse me, and was really the rock that uh, Holliston built that victory on. Well, this will be a free kick from the 20-yard line. Most of the time you see this as a punt, but it looks like they're going to tee it up here. Number 24, Mitch Gimblet, and number two, Billy Nash, drop back to the 30-yard line. You know, if you if you get a strong place kick or something, I, I really like this instead of instead of punting. I think this is a... Uh, it's a good idea to get the ball further, maybe a little bit further downfield and get your uh, your um, coverage team down there a little more quickly, too. Well, I think in the pros in college, it's the hang time it that is, gives yeah. the yeah. time for your tacklers to get down there. This kick pops up. It's going to come down. Fair catch called yeah. for by Gimblet. And now he's going to attempt to drop kick from the Panther 45-yard line, right, Jay? I did look that up. I looked that up, and and here's what I found out was that obviously in the NFL you can do that. That was that's been done many times in the NFL. What you do, what we're talking about is after a free kick, you can call a fair catch, and if you call a fair catch, you can you can uh, get a you get a free kick to try and kick a field goal. And a free kick means that the defense has to stand 10 yards back, 
you can get a field goal. Now, I checked this out. It's still still official in the NFL. And what I read was in the NFL and in high school. Now, most high school rules are based on NCAA rules now. NCAA does not allow it. They haven't since 1950. Oh. So I'm not sure Holy if the high school Doug can or can't do it. Man. So that's the history of that. First and 10 from the from the Panther 44-yard line. Arvanitis with Benson behind him. And then that play is blown up. And a good charge by the Wolverines right there. Panthers have pushed back four yards for second down. Yeah, that, that, that middle of the line there, they just put all the linebackers. They had, I think it looked like almost eight men in that box right there, and they really made that box really small and came after them. Second down and 14. Arvanitis steps up and moves to the right, looks downfield. He's got an open receiver. Just off the hands. Nice dive there by Dezindelet. We've got a penalty back here. The flag in the backfield. Holding on Holliston. And I think they would probably deny this. I would uh, uh, decline this. Decline this. Let's see, they're going to take this. Waiting for Pindell to make his call. I, I think I would decline this penalty, just give them one shot instead of two shots to get downfield. Is that kind of a tough Head decision. referee over there explaining it. Yeah, it looks like they're going to take the penalty. Got some explaining to do, Lucy. Oh, no, they decline it. Okay. Like you said, Jay. <laughs> they do the smart thing. Yep. So it'll be third. So third and 14 for Holliston. 3.06 to go here in the first quarter. Eight to nothing, the Panther lead. Topher Ryan tight end to the right. Three receivers, Nash to Zindelet and Naughton. Arvanitis heads to the sideline, skips out of bounds. Short gain. That'll bring up fourth down and about 10 or 11. Yeah, they gave Matt a little time to look over the field. He didn't see anything he liked. So what he did was he wisely kept the ball and uh, gained about two or three yards on there. And now Topher Ryan's going to come out through a punt. So the Panthers forced to punt for the second time tonight. 2.56 to go in the first quarter. Dropping back a couple of return men for Westwood. Nice scoop by Ryan, and he gets off a boomer inside the 20-yard line. And nice coverage by the Panthers. No gain on the return as they throw Fay down. Number eight, McKay Crichton out there on the tackle, along with a little help from a few other friends. Well, outside of that first drive by Holliston, both uh, both offenses have been a little stymied by the two defenses out here tonight. Westwood will take over at the 22. 2.44 left to go in this first quarter. 8 nothing Holliston in the lead. So Westwood will have the ball on, the, on their own 22-yard line to start this drive. Their third of the night. A little bit better field position. You can pass out of this field position, feel a little more comfortable doing that. Plaff hands off Whoa. to Hall. <laughs> oh, he handed it off to Hall, and Hall he handed almost off to handed, Elliott. He almost <laughs> handed it off to Elliott, exactly. And big number 72, the Harvard University commit, makes the tackle for a loss. Leading tacklers for the Panthers after the first game, number 22, uh, Dylan Ibbotson with nine tackles and a sack. Kevin Lyons, number 32, eight tackles and a sack. Number 24, Mitch Gimblet with seven tackles. Number four, number four, Connor Mulvaney with four tackles, uh, six tackles. And the Wolverines have yet to cross the positive yardage mark with their rushing offense so far. Negative two yards of rushing offense. Plaff with receivers to his left. Looks there. He's in trouble. Shovels it forward. Complete. A nice catch there by 
Shamar Hall. Well, what happened there was I, I think that was Dylan Ibbotson who who broke through and he and he caught Plath from behind, and Plath was able to just kind of you know free himself enough out of there to throw a little uh, spot pass out there and uh, get about seven or eight yards. The other great defensive play last week and or two weeks ago against Norton, uh, number 51, David Harding's the one who got who blocked that punt that led to a Panther touchdown. So third down and two for Westwood. Plaff hands off to Fay. He's got a couple of yards. He's right at the yard market. Let's see where they mark it. And they are gonna move the chains for a first down. Checking into the game, number 56, Ryan Cahill, and number 78, Gabe Medeiros, up front for the Panthers. So first and 10 at the Westwood 34-yard line. And that play never got started. We got a flag down. That false start, I believe, yeah, false start on, um, on Westwood. You could tell that because Hollison, the, the two uh, linebackers, the middle and the right side linebacker, were both coming. They both wanted to blitz, and they both they both took off at the same time. So something hit to signal them to do that, and it was the movement by the uh, the Westwood player. Westwood is 31 and 17 on the road since 2009. I know I talked about the great record the Panthers have here being 44 and seven. So first down and 15 for Westwood. Hand off to Fay. Oh, <laughs> and he runs into some red shirts. Got to point out some new red shirts. We love these new Panther yeah. jerseys. Haven't talked about that, Jay. Uh, Sport View did a, a preview show on Media Day uh, earlier la last week, last Thursday it was. That's just coming up on HCAT TV. Don't want to miss it. We got a chance to talk to uh, Senior captains Scott Elliott and Will Crowley. We talked to Todd Kiley and Paul Athey. Well, we're at the end of the first quarter. Panthers eight, Westwood nothing. And it's time for the Panther Players of the Week. And on Max Preps, there were four Players of the Week announced. Overall, Player of the Week, number 72, Scott Elliott. Offensive Player of the Week, number six, Matt Arbonitis. On defense, number 11, Henry Naughton. And on special teams, number 24, Mitch Gimblett, who did a great job on punt returns. Yeah, nice, nice job all around, as I said, all, all three uh, phases of the game last week. This last play, by the way, just wanted to also point out, um, Dave Harding did a great job of containing Plath and pushed him in. And once again, he was able to uh, make the tackle. So very nicely done by that Hollison defense. And that's what you're gonna have to do is contain these guys. Don't let them to the outside because you've got a lot of strength there in the middle of that defensive alignment, and you want to force everything you can into that middle where those guys are living right now. And a new award that we started last week, the HCAT Panther Alumni Player of the oh, Week, right. Jay. Do you know yeah. who that is? I do now, Sam Athey. <laughs> Sam Athey of Stonehill College had 12 tackles and a fumble recovery against a, and in a win against St. Anselm's. The second place was uh, Joe Belomo who scored a touchdown. And had 40 yards rushing. Yep. So second down and 13 for the Wolverines as we start the second quarter. Plaff's got two receivers to his right. They all get a head start. And that's gonna back up Westwood another five yards. Once again, Connor Mulvaney, you know, playing in the middle there, the, the, the linebacking squad. He saw that movement and he went in. He's he's looking to blitz. I think I think you might see him blitz. So I I kind of watch him right now, kind of key on him and see if if he's uh, still going to blitz or if they call it off. So second down, second down and seventeen for Westwood. See if Holliston can really put it to him here. Defense shuffling just before the snap. Plaff rolls to his right. Fires, incomplete, nobody there. That'll bring up third down and 17. 
Yeah, now this is a big play for uh, Westwood because uh, in the field position part of the game, if um, Westwood doesn't get a first down here, or if they throw an incomplete pass, uh, Hollison's going to be getting the ball in a pretty good field position. This defense, uh, Tom, has played exceptionally well these first uh, game and a quarter. They really have, Jay. It's very, very exciting to see that. You, when you were talking to Coach Athey and Coach Kylie, you were pointing out the last two games last season, which a lot of these guys played in, were two shutouts against Hanover and Westwood. And we got a timeout on the field with 10.55 to go in, this, in the first half. So third and 17 for Westwood. Fires into the flat. Short gain on the completion to Hannon, tackled by Keese, number 17. That's going to force Westwood to punt. So another stop for the for the Panther defense. Well, once again, Connor Mulvaney got in there a little bit, and uh, he didn't get, he was just breaking a, breaking the block as he got a, with his hands. Otherwise, he would have got his hands up, and he could have blocked that pass, I believe, if, if he was able to get his hands up in time. Nash and Gimblet drop back to receive the punt for Holliston. Low snap. Nice kick, though. High spiral. Nash calls for the fair catch and gets it at the Panther 38-yard line. 10.06 to go in the first half. Panthers leading 8 to nothing. Let's see if they can get something going on their fourth offensive drive of the night. Yeah, again, in that defense, you just got to give them all the credit in the world, Tom. They, they're really playing out of their minds. Right here, I think, you know, Holl Holliston, they have the opportunity to uh, maybe open up the playbook a little bit and uh, kind of maybe throw a, a, a couple different passes here. I'd like to see, right now, I'd like to see Tofa Ryan kind of get, I'd like to see them get him involved a little bit because we've seen him make some great catches and coming across the middle, although now it looks like they're going to war. In a war offense, this is interesting. Yeah, they got Henry Naughton, number 11, in a quarterback. Dezendelet on the right. They pitch to Ibbotson off the left. Works his way down the line. Gain a three. At some point, we'll talk about this, but the, uh, the guy who originated this was a guy, a Medfield High offensive coach, who happens yeah. to be now on the Holliston side, <laughs> Coach Nick Stevens. Wow. And he's the one who kind of, kind of, he saw this in a, in a Super Bowl game and kind of came up with it for uh, Medfield. Second and six. Turnaround pitch to Ibbotson. And he follows his blockers, including number 78, Gabe Medeiros, for a Panther first down. And what happened was, he, they called it, what, the diesel over there, right? They did call yeah, it the diesel. I remember doing that game. I called it the turtle. I didn't know you it was called the, the diesel. <laughs> so first and 10 from midfield. They go to Ibbotson again, right side. Got some room, works his oh, way. Oh, what a move. Couple of hip shakes, and he's oh. inside the 30-yard line to the 25. Well, there's a move that you're going to love to see. Well, I hope we get that on replay over and over again. That was a zip left, zip right, and see you later. Great run by Ibbotson. Dylan Ibbotson last year rushed for 226 yards, a 5.8 average, and five touchdowns. Great gain right there. And we got a timeout, Westwood, with 9.06 to go in the first half. So first and 10 for the Panthers at the 24. They hand it to pitch it to Zindelet. He turns the corner, one man to beat. Pushed out of bounds by Lahane. But it's a Panther first down inside the 10. Now we saw Anthony score on a running play in the first half. He's got the touchdown here on the other side, down the other end zone. I want to minute, talk a minute about Anthony Desindelet. He is a great receiver. And now they're getting some, some running back work out of him. And boy, oh boy, he looks really good. First and goal for the Panthers. They hand it to Desindelet. Touchdown, Panthers! Well, thank you for that call, Coach Kylie, and thank you for that run, <laughs> Anthony Desendler. That's exactly what I was talking about. He's very, very good offensively as a receiver, and now he's working very well as a running back, especially out of this um, war formation. So from eight yards out, number five, DZ, Anthony Desendler with his second touchdown of the game. 
Puts the Panthers up 14 to nothing. Connor Mulvaney ready to try to add to that lead. Kick is just wide to the left. So with 8.50 to go in the first half, the Panthers on the board again after a 40, a 50, uh, sorry, 60 yard drive. 60 yard, I knew right. I'd get it right eventually. <laughs> 60 yard drive. Anthony Dezindelet from eight yards out. His fifth touchdown of his Panther career and the Holliston is over Westwood, 14 to nothing. Well, great crowd here. We're watching the Red Sea on our monitor and seeing <laughs> they came out in force to cheer on the Panthers here on homecoming night and Holliston not disappointing. I like the way they get the they get this out, they get the, the word out to coordinate the colors here. You know, if if, if the football team's wearing black, it's a blackout. If they're wearing white, it's a whiteout. If they're wearing red, it's the Red Sea. They they really do a nice job of keeping these kids in. And these kids are a blast. Oh, we also have the band down here tonight. We got the Panther here tonight, which I know really get you going, Tom. They got every pulled out all the stops tonight for homecoming. I and mean, the other thing was, we got a nice six o'clock start. I wish every game was six o'clock. <laughs> we got a nice six o'clock start here. You're such a night owl, Jay. Yeah. Well, you know, you get to a certain age, and <laughs> well, hello and welcome to all of our Facebook Live viewers tonight. Glad you joined us here on a, just a beautiful night. Panthers with the 14 to nothing lead. Hope you're enjoying it. Connor Mulvaney's kick comes down at the 20 yard line taken by Faye. He heads across towards the Wolverine bench and finds some room, finally pushed out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Nice return for number 34. Well, that was a nice return and I think Hollison's a little bit lucky on that return because he kept they kept stretching him out and stretching him out. If he had cut back, he might have got quite a few more yards and maybe might have even gone, but Hollison just kept stretching him out there and they were able to put him, uh, put him out of bounds out there at about the where are they, the 37, 36, 37. So Eight. first and 10 for Westwood. 841 left to go in this first half. Hollison leading 14 nothing. Number 59, Sam Carell in at defensive end for the Panthers. Plaff with Fave to his right, or to Hall. He goes deep down the right sideline. Lahane, or Mahoney, number seven with a step, but he was overthrown. That's that read pass option. And, and uh, Plaff ran that to actually to perfection. He uh, put the ball right, in the, right near the, the running back stomach and he pulled it out just at the last minute when he made the decision that I can pass the ball downfield. I got a guy open down there, which he hit. He just missed him a little bit. But he did had he did have the Hollis and me and beat. So second down and ten for Westwood. Hall to Plaff's left. Hand off to number twenty four. And he breaks away for a big gain. And he's knocked out of bounds. Yeah, but we got a flag back here. I don't, I'm way see. behind the play. Let's see what the story is here. But Shamar Hall, once he got going, yeah, when, they, when they've they've told the the guys not to uh, not to move the chain, so this will be coming back. Probably either a hold or a block in the back. Let's see what get the call right now. The ball is holding. Yep, it is holding. So that negates, not only negates a big play, but. Uh, so we'll do first down again. Let's see. Is it oh, going to wow. be face mask, personal foul. That's what it was. Oh, wow. So that's not going to be a spot foul. That's going to be from the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's 15. Yeah. And that's going to be first down and 25 for Westwood. So I think it's, it's, it's from, from the spot, yeah. from the spot of the foul. Okay. 15 from the face mask. So that was downfield while, while Hall was off to the races. Second down and 12 then for Westwood. Meanwhile, Hollison's got to remember to contain over there. They know who's going to get the ball on the running play, so he's just got to make sure to contain him. Hand off to Faye. 
He hits the left line and runs into number 51, David Harding, and a few friends. Well, he hit the left line. The left line hit him right back. Nice job by Harding. Gain of four, be third down and eight. Yeah, that's another big third down here for uh, Westwood because they don't want to give Hollison the ball back on another short field. 7.50 left to go in the first half. Clock is running here in the first half. Panthers up 14 to nothing. Two receivers to Plaps right. Rolls out of the pocket to the right. Short dump pass, yeah. flag behind the play. This is a holding, I believe. It might be an it might be a illegal man downfield. I saw 58 was like three or four yards downfield. Oh, maybe it is. 50. It's against Westwood. Holliston will decline it. Well, yeah, they want to decline this. They certainly don't want to take this penalty. They want to make them punt from here. Holding yeah. against Westwood. And so it's to Holliston declines it, so it'll be fourth and eight. Nice to hear Jack Harding's voice here. Yeah. So familiar what all they call those it Boston the, people. Got to come down here to Committee and Field to hear it live. What do they call it? Dul dulcet, the tones? dulcet tones. Dulcet tones. Dulcet tones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jack, Jack Harper. Excuse me. You can look it up. Fourth down and eight for Westwood. Just Gimblet back to receive the punt. Westwood downs it at the Panther 30 yard line. So with seven minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first half, Panthers 14 to nothing, get the ball back. All right, they moved it well in the spread. And they moved it well in the war, Tom. So looks like uh, Coach Kylie's got his option here. What do, what do he wants to do? Who wants to score, Jay? Well, who doesn't? This is a great, great crowd, too. This is really nice homecoming, Tom. Now, is this what? This is your 40th year out of high school? What? This is your 40th year out of high school, right? That 40th high school reunion so just last a home, weekend. Homecoming here? You, you know, yeah. Now, you look pretty of good sorts. for a guy your age. Holliston <laughs> to war with Norton at center. Pitch to Zindle at left side. Whoa. And he's tripped up. After he crosses the line of scrimmage. Gain at two. That was a, that was a nice tackle, but if he didn't make that call, doesn't it was gone because that whole uh, side opened up for him. This time they go to Benson off the right side. He cuts it back. Shakes off a couple of Wolverine tacklers, picks up the first down, and he's out near midfield. He's well, Tristan Benson, love the way he runs. He just just attacks attacks the defender, and he's got some nice moves too. First down and ten. They go to Benson again. Ball's on the ground. Oh, there's a and penalty. A flag behind the play. Referees. Looks like Holliston was able to recover. Let's see what the flag is. And we got a timeout on the field with 6.24 to go in the first half. Well, one of the uh, Westwood players helped off the field. We hope he's okay. It's still about a six, still six minutes to go in the uh, first half. But last last week, until right at the end of the fourth quarter, Hollison, the Hollison defense hadn't even given up 100 yards. So second down and 11 for the Panthers. Pitches to Ibbotson, and up comes number 53 of Westwood to snuff out that play. That was, uh, I believe that was their captain, Miles Hespelink. That'll bring up third down and 12 for Holliston. Well, he, he came off playing, when he's playing Hespelink, he's playing to the outside here, and he did a nice job of containing and, and uh, making the tackle, just as a couple of the Holliston kids have done against Westwood tonight. 
He's had some nice defense from both sides of the ball, some nice defensive plays. So Holliston with three receivers to Arvanitis' left. Topher Ryan tight to the right. Arvanitis rolls left, got some room, got big at Scott Elliott in front of him. He goes for the slide at the 45-yard line. Yeah, this will be, and Holliston will go for it here, definitely. But what a great fake by Arvanitis to Tristan Benson. And uh, about half of the, this whole side of the field for Westwood got caught in that fake. Well, I think he saw two numbers, seven, two, in yeah. front of him. <laughs> Plenty of room. Nice job by Elliott getting out in front of that play. So fourth down and three for Holliston. And they're lined up to go for it with four minutes and 51 seconds in the first half clock running. Panthers up 14 to nothing. Arvanitis with the fake to Benson, rolls right. Looks downfield, he's got an open receiver and a catch! Right inside the 20 yard line, number five, Anthony DeZindelet. Well, Anthony DeZindelet's really making me look pretty smart tonight, isn't he? I told you earlier, he was one of the top receivers and, and, a, and a running back too. We talked about this a little bit in the Norton game where DeZindelet had like, a, something like 138 yards and three touchdowns and one of them just an incredible catch and run. Anthony DeZindelet was a perfect three for three. Yeah. Three and catches, three touchdowns, 138 and you, yards. And you see his feet, how he was able to get the both feet in bounds of this, this situation. Very nicely done by Anthony. And nice job by Arvanitis delivering that ball on the sideline. So first and 10 from the 20 yard line. Hand off to Benson, left side, jumps into gear. He's wide right open. Touchdown, Panthers. Now, uh, what, what Westwood is doing defensively, again, is they're trying to crash those ends. Once again, that you know, you can, you can debate whether this is a good, good idea or not. Some people, a lot of defensive um, coaches will tell you to crash those ends, crash them, crash them. Well, that's fine, but if you crash them and somehow you get blocked or someone gets outside of you like that, they can make the move to the outside and cut back to the inside. The safety's already moved out, and there's nobody there, and that's exactly what Tristan Benson did for his touchdown. Kick is up and splits the uprights. Connor Mulvaney's extra point makes it 21 to nothing. Holliston, as the Panthers drove from their own 42 yard line, Tristan Benson from 20 yards out, his first touchdown of the season, the fourth of his Panther career. And Holliston with the lead with four minutes to go. Well, this looks a lot like this first game in Norton, and let's hope it doesn't turn out that way because Norton did come back and make a, a ball game out of it. So this game is by nowhere near over, and I'm guessing that's one of the lessons that the coaches and the, the players are going to take out of that Norton game is if we get a big lead, we have to keep our foot on the gas. We have to keep going. We have to get as many points as we can while we're playing well because, you know, this game cycles sometimes, momentum cycles, and one or two, one or two touchdowns here, and uh, Westwood's right back in it. So, uh, great job so far, offensively and defensively. But uh, Hollison has to keep the pedal to the metal. Mulvaney's kick bounces in front of Fay at the 20, picks it up at the 15, and he is covered up quickly for a short gain. Uh, McKay Crichton did a really nice job on that forcing the run out. The runner wanted to come to the outside, and he cut him off, made him go back inside uh, for the tackle. Nicely done. You know, a lot of times, you, you hear the names of the guys that make the tackles, and rightfully so, they do a good job, but but it's those guys that set them up. You know, these these guys who turn, whose job, my job is to turn the play inside and let the other guys do it, or, or a defensive lineman. My job is to keep these guys off my linebackers, and a lot of times, you don't hear those names of the people who are doing that, but what they're doing is very important um, is part of a whole team effort. So Westwood starting on their own 20 yard line. Plaff with two receivers to his right. Fakes the handoff to Hall. Good pressure by the Panthers. In there was number 32, Kevin Lyons. Well, Kevin Lyons, a sophomore, you know, he, he had a really nice opening, opening game as a varsity player. 
Uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago, down in Norton, he's he done a re- he did a really nice job getting in there, flushing in. What they did that time is they blitzed they blitzed he him and I believe it might have been Corner Mulvaney. I didn't see, uh, but they blitzed two guys off the uh, one off the edge and one in the middle to try and um, contain the quarterback and everything. And, and Hollison is just really turning everybody loose right now. So second down and ten. You know, or Westwood. Here, what you may see is have them back off a little bit, but to anticipating a possible run to react to the blitz. Fake to Hall. Plaff under the rush. Knocked down by number 72, Scott Elliott. And number four, Connor Mulvaney. Look, Scott Elliott is going to just absolutely, on the offensive and defensive side of the ball, he's absolutely going to control anywhere in his sight. What he did right there is what you call a bull rush. He just pushed his hand right back, got right in there, and, and made the tackle. That's why, see, sometimes you need to blitz to, to make things happen. Sometimes you just get that great play by the defensive line. And right there, Scott Elliott, the captain, did a nice job. Three minutes and 39 seconds. Clock running here in the first half. Panthers up 21 to nothing. Now, it's early in the game. It's a third down, but this is a really, really big third down because if they don't get this and give Hollis a good field position, this game might get out of hand. Plap. Chase. Oh, that should be. Just dumps it. Yeah. Well, I think somebody Hall, there. Hall was over there. Yeah, so. they're pointing to the man, and, and that's a great call by the refs. He was there. Smart play by the junior quarterback, but not good fortune for the Wolverines as they are forced another three and out. I think a lot of people now can see why in the, the beginning of these first two games, I've really done a lot of raving about this defense. They're just really good in, in, in all phases of, of playing defense and all three levels of the defense. They're doing a great job. Nash and Gimblet back to receive the kick, and the kick is sort of off the side of his foot. Takes a Westwood bounce, and it rolls right to midfield. So the Panthers will be in good shape right on the 50-yard line with three minutes exactly to go in the first half, leading Westwood 21 to nothing. One of the big things, I know you always make fun of me for saying this, but one of the big things, Tom, that I really, really don't like about punt return teams. If you're not going to catch the ball, get out of there. And, and what happens is there was, there was a play right there. You mean poison? Ball, poison? Poison, whatever. <laughs> you get to yell it out, but get out of there because and now, now's your, your cue here. Because the ball is not round. It's going to take bounces to go in. It could, 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 right, could take a bounce. Write that down, kids. Write could take that a down bounce. Home. Well, it could take a bounce to go in the wrong direction, hit off somebody's foot, and then you've given up the ball. If you're not going to do anything with the ball, get out of there. First and 10 for the Panthers. They actually mark it at the Westwood 49. And handoff is to Dylan Ibbotson off the left side. And he's got a Panther first down right away. Yeah, what you notice now about the Hollis, uh, the Westwood defense is they're bringing their linebackers. They played their linebackers back a little bit. They played more of a, uh, a normal type of a defense. We've got a timeout on the field with 2.52 to go in the first half. Nash in motion. Arvanitis with the handoff to Ibbotson. And he's got some room. A nice block by Nash. Inside the 20-yard line. Another Panther first down. 2.19 to go. The clock stops as Bill Mayer and crew try to run down the sidelines. That's what I like seeing run tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's going to happen. Get those chain games <laughs> moving. Oxygen over there, please. Boy, does Ibbotson have some moves. He reminds you a lot of those Holliston, great Holliston backs that have the speed. They get offside, and then they have, they have the moves, too. Benson swaps into the game, number 21. Arvanitis on the read, hands it off to Benson. And he's forward for three or four yards, second down. We've got a timeout on the field with a minute 58 in the half, Panthers leading 21 to nothing. Henry Norton in the game to the left, tight end position. 
Nash in motion. Arbonitis hands it off to Benson, and that play never got off the ground. False start. That'll back the Panthers up. It'll be second down and 12. Well, hello, O Canada, to Cecil Wright. Panther yeah, well, great from the early 70s, championship player. We're going to pull that show while we do with Cecil Wright and some of the stories he told about what he did when he played football for Holliston. And, you know, old Cecil, well, he, he's a great guy. And uh, we miss you, Cecil. If you're watching us now, we miss you. He was, uh, he was my freshman assistant football coach. It was great oh, to have well, him. Playing for him must have been a blast. Oh, my gosh, it was fun. Shocker. Arvanitis. Nice connection to Naughton up the right sideline inside the five. First and goal, Panthers. We also got uh, information. Someone in North Carolina is watching this too, Tom. Ken Dunn. This is kind of cool, this Facebook gonna thing. Add, we, we, he's we, going to have to add another page to <laughs> yeah. the uh, history book tonight. That's kind of cool. We, we, now we know who's watching us. You know? <laughs> One twenty-five left to go in this first half. The Hollison's leading 21 to nothing, and they're trying to put this game a little bit out of reach here. Panthers first and goal from the five. Let's see what Coach Kiley called. He takes a referee's telling the Oh, maybe maybe he took a I think thirty he had second. A thirty second yeah, timeout. Thirty out. second yeah. timeout. The Panthers run right to the line and they're in war offense. Henry Naughton as the quarterback. Ibbotson to the left. They pitch to Ibbotson, works his way down the line, steps in. Short. And just short of the goal line. So it'll be second down and goal from the one. Gain of four for Holliston. They come right to the line again. led to the right. Ibbotson to the left. Naughton turns around, tosses oh. to Ibbotson in. Touchdown, Panthers! Got a flag on the play. Touchdown, Panthers! It's against Westwood. And so Dylan Ibbotson with his second touchdown of the season with a minute with 57 seconds to go in the first half puts the Panthers up 27 to nothing. Really nice drive. And of course, that was all again, once again, done because up front in that offensive line, Hollison's just controlling the line of scrimmage. And we got a whistle before Mulvaney can get his kick off. Ball stopped by Holliston. They move the ball back. Quano is kind of pulling the ball to the left a little bit. So we just may want to make a little adjustment for that. And he's, he's got plenty of distance on the ball. An, an extra five yards really doesn't make any difference. If he kicks the ball the same way uh, as he kicks it, he has plenty of distance. But he just wants to make sure not, not to pull it to the left. And I think that's what he's doing now. He's kind of setting up a little, a little bit further to the right, I believe. Muscles that kick. It goes left. Yep. No good. So with 57 seconds to go in the first half, the Panthers on the board again with their fourth touchdown of the night. It's 27 to nothing. Dylan Ibbotson, his second touchdown of the season, the seventh on his Panther career, and it's been all Holliston here in the first half. All Holliston on offense and defense. You know, the, the lines on both of those front seven and the de defense, the Everyone is just really, really doing a nice job tonight for Hollison. As, this, and as I said, this is exactly what happened down at Norton. But you've got to keep, keep this going, Tom. It's really important to keep this going. Oh, I, I forgot that the Greek checked in in my, yes. our pregame. Yes. He, he saw the Panthers rolling 30 to 14 in this game. And I think his crystal ball was pretty clear from uh, Falmouth or Ireland or wherever he's at, <laughs> or up in uh, up at Colby. Up in Waterville, Maine, to see his son Cam, who's a senior up there. Some of you Holliston people might remember Cam Klaus. 
Short kick taken at the 28 by Hall. And he's tackled at the 34 yard line. So Westwood will have 51 seconds to work with here in the first half. See what Coach Pindell elects to do. Well, you know, there's two theories here. One is to just run, run, the, run the clock out. You know, you can't take a knee because if you take a knee, Halson's going to call timeouts and get the ball back. The other is to let, you know, bombs away. Plaff hands it off to Faye. Hits that right side. Panthers push back for no gain. And we got a timeout on the field with 36 seconds to go in the first half. Panthers leading 27 to nothing. Second down and nine for Westwood. Plaff goes down the right sideline. Good coverage there. Yeah, we got another penalty flag here. Well, that was. Let's see what this that is. Was Billy Nash, I think, running. Oh, that was. That was number. Having a little trouble with these new uniforms. That was number eight. That was McKay Crichton running step for step with the receiver. A little help over the top by Henry Naughton. So we have an unsportsmanlike conduct against Holliston. That moves the ball for Westwood. Gives them a little impetus here with 23 seconds left to go. It puts the ball right at midfield. Well, that puts it within range of a Hail Mary. Or a short pass on a Hail Mary. Panthers have to be careful here after the penalty. Plaff with two receivers to the right, one to the left. He looks right. He's under pressure, grabbed by Will Crowley and thrown down for a sack. So with 13 seconds to go, that might do it in the first half. Well, the captain, Will Crowley, is a very, very special football player and he does it both offensively and defensively. And that brings us to halftime. The Holliston Panthers on homecoming with a 27 0 lead over Westwood. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we told you, this is homecoming here at Holliston High, the class of 2019 advisors. Amanda Rivera and Chrissy Chestnut are up here. And they're going to handle the little halftime presentation here. There's a very good chance they'll get the names correct, too. So who wants to go first? Good evening, everyone. We're so excited to present this year's homecoming court. This year, the senior class voted to select the following 10 students for their exceptional character, service, talent, and contributions to the school community. Please put your hands together and welcome to the field your class of 2019 homecoming court. Treasurer. She is highly involved in community service through the Leo's Club and National 
Honor Society and is a captain of the varsity tennis team. We couldn't do it without her. Let's hear it for Maddie Cerulli. Our next senior is one of the most fun guys to be around. And he's one of the kindest people in the senior class. He is also a pivotal player on the varsity soccer team. Please put your hands together for Griffin Zellin. Next up is one of the most recognizable faces in the senior class. Though you don't see him on the field right now because he's a four-year starter on the varsity football team and team captain. He is also the vice president of the senior class and actively involved in community service through the National Honor Society. Let's congratulate Scott Elliott. This member of your homecoming court is one of the hardest working people in the class. He is actively involved in serving his community with Leo's Club and National Honor Society and is a four-year starter and now team captain of the varsity tennis and swim teams. Besides all that, he's just a great kid and so much fun to be with. Please clap it up for your class president, Will Flanagan. Our next member of the homecoming court is known throughout the class for her positivity and kindness. She's a stand-up player on the varsity field hockey and lacrosse team also contributes to the school community with her work for the student council. Please put your hands together. Our next senior is fun, caring, and compassionate. She's always volunteering to help with all class and active member of Best Buddies and does tons of community service with the Leo's Club and the Beautiful Mind Campaign. Please congratulate Aaron Kipp. Next up is an easygoing, supportive, and great leader on the athletic field. She is a player on the varsity soccer team and is now team captain. In addition to her athletics, she does community service with the National Honor Society and Leo's Club. Please clap it up for Elizabeth Mackey. This next senior started as a freshman on the varsity cross country, indoor track, and lacrosse teams. Not only is she a star athlete, she's also the president of student council, co-president of the National Honor Society, and there's no one more positive or fun to be with. Please put your hands together for Lauren Sally. member of this year's homecoming court is one of the hardest working, smartest, and nicest students in the school. She is the secretary of the class, highly involved in Best Buddies and community service with the Leo's Club and National Honor Society. Thank you for all you have done for our class. Please congratulate Maggie Young. Seven to nothing, Hollison in the lead here. As uh, Hollison prepares to kick off, Connor Mulvaney. Ready to start the third quarter. Mulvaney's got the ball teed up here on homecoming night. Mulvaney's kick, a line drive.
Neelock and Keese locked up on the two wide receivers with some help. There. They're going to blitz and it's Lions right. Oh, he Flat. just missed him. Takes it himself. Nice tackle. And up comes number 17, Sean Keast, with the tackle. Sean Keast with the tackle. Well, if that, that was fourth down. If that was supposed to be a pass play, Kevin Lyons really broke that up because he he blitzed right off the right side. And he came in and he would just just missed Plaff and forced him to bring the ball down and forced him to the outside where Keith was able to finish it off. So once again, a nice job by the uh, Holliston defense. 8.52 left to go in the third quarter. Nash and Gimblet drop back for the Panthers. High kick bounces at the 40. A little bit of a Westwood bounce down to the 35 of the Panthers. So with 8.33 to go in the third quarter, Panthers will have the ball for the first time in the second half. Well, it'll be interesting to see both the uh, spread offense and the war offense have both been very effective and efficient tonight. I think you're going to see war offense here to start the second half. That was the, that's the offense the Panthers went to against Norton with about eight minutes to go. And really, really just took the stuffing out of the Lancers with a, with a big drive and a touchdown. Yeah, I'll take, the, I'll take it a step further. They turned the game around because the momentum was all in Norton's favor. They cut the lead to 20 to 15, a five-point Hollison lead, and Hollison got the ball and just marched the right downfield using the war offense. We're going to the spread here. Harvard is the quarterback. Benson at the tailback spot. Turn around, hand off to Benson, and hits the ground. And a break for the Wolverines as it's Westwood ball, first turnover of the game for either team. And so neither team starts the second half the way they wanted. So best field position of the night for Westwood. It, and you know, Tom, it, it's interesting. I mean, I know it's 27 to nothing. And this may sound a little, a little ridiculous, but the Westwood defense hasn't really played that poorly. I mean, they've been they've been pushed around a little bit by Hosman. They haven't made a lot of mistakes out there. Not the not too many big plays. Right. The Panthers have just been consistent. I mean, they're, they're certainly outmanned in the, in, in the, uh, the Halston offensive line is just, who's probably going to outman quite a few teams this year, but. Let's see if the Panthers can come up with their own takeaway. Handoff is to Hall. Coming up from behind, number 32, Kevin Lyons with a tackle. Well, that sophomore, keep an eye on him because he's going to be around for three years, and he's a good one. He is, he is really <laughs> showing us something in his first yeah. two varsity games at middle linebacker. And once again, the, the defense really just shutting down that uh, running game for Westwood. So second down and 10. Split receivers to both sides with Hall in the backfield. Plaff hands it to Hall, goes right side, up comes Naughton. A little help over the top there by number 59, Sam Carell. Gain of three, call it third and seven. And I think you're at the point of the game and the point on the field where Westwood's probably going to have to go for on all four downs here. Unless there's a major penalty or a major loss of, down, uh, loss of yardage. Clock running with seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Panthers leading 27 to nothing. Hand off to Fay. He makes some yardage off the right side across the 30. That's going to bring up fourth down and three. That was an interesting play because the way everything was lined up there, Westwood, the play actually went to the, to the right for Westwood, but uh, 
it looked like things were opening up on the left. Uh, Holliston looked like they were playing, shifted way over, and looked like that left-hand side was open. Kind of like you can see it right now. It looks like that the wide to the left is, uh, is open. And off to Faye, goes to the right side this time. Skips a couple of Panthers, tripped up as he crosses the 22 yard line, down to the 21. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. That left hand side uh, of the offense for uh, Westwood, it, you know, it looked like Hollison was playing in. I couldn't quite recognize what kind of a defense they were running there. Because normally you like to have somebody outside of that uh, tackle out there. So after the Panther fumble, Westwood four running plays in a row, and they've got a first down. They're first in a long time. Plath, trouble in the backfield, and the Panthers gang up on him for a big sack. Well, Lions, that... Elliott, and uh, and Gimblet okay. in the backfield, or that was Dylan Ibbotson. Now that time, what happened? Kevin Lyons, he's, he was over there. He was playing the right corner. And he came down, and he just went, just blew right through that, uh, right around that uh, that line, made a nice tackle. So a loss of five on the play, second down and 15. Bring me up, Don. And guys, that's the third sack of the night for the Panthers, negative 19 yards. Wow. Thank you, Los. Plath lets it go to the right. He tried to find okay. some one-on-one -on -one coverage. Keist was there with help from Naughton. Now what happened there was, once again, Kevin Lyons came in on a blitz, but what he did there, he couldn't get to the quarterback, so he did the next best thing, which is get your hands up. He got his hands up nice and high, forced the throw up over his hands, and uh, the throw was too long for the receiver. Nice job. Kevin Lyons is having himself a second half here. Clock stopped with 4.47 to go in the third quarter. Now, Westwood, the off Westwood offensive line is doing a pretty decent job of controlling the middle of the field from the blitz, but the outside is where Hollison's beating them. And third and 15, Coach Pindell wants a timeout. So third down and 15 for Westwood. 4.47 left to go in the third. Plath looking downfield, Panthers chasing. He's around the corner, picks up a blocker, up the right sideway, line inside the 10, and a first and goal for a Westwood. So Jake Plath doing it with his legs. Well, that time Hollison blitz, and they, they came on the blitz right into the side that the, that uh, Westwood was running on, but because it, it, I didn't see if it was a pulling guard, it looked like it might have been a pulling guard, because the pulling guard was out there in front he was able to get the block on the um, the blitzer, and uh, Pleff was off to the races. So first and goal from the from the five. Westwood brings number 24, Shamar Hall, back into the game. He's their big back. Hand off to Hall, and Lyons wrestles him down from behind. Crowley was there in front with the shoulder. And it's going to be second down and goal. Not sure there was any gain on that play. There's another great defensive play by Kevin Lyons coming off that left side. I mean, they're just not even blocking him. You know, I don't know if they can't get to him. They just they certainly can't be ignoring him because he's certainly making his uh, making himself known back there. Well, there's no tight end on that side, so he's he's got a shorter it's, distance. It's, yeah, it is the weak side of the line. The second down and goal from the five. Now they bring a tight end over there on the left. Hall shifts to Plaff's right. Hand off to, fake to Hall, and Plaff takes it himself and spins around off of a Panther. And he's down to the one yard line. Hollison kind of got caught in that play. Everybody kind of got bunched up on that side, and Plaff read it correctly. Well, Plaff, took Plaff it. Saw it, showing that athleticism. Yeah, he took it to his right, and not only his speed, but it looked like a spin move, too. 
Clock running with 2.38 to go here in the third quarter. Panthers leading 27 to nothing, but it's third and goal from the one. Westwood lines up in the two tight end formation with one receiver split wide to the left. Handed off to Hall, he buries his head and, and goes forward for a Westwood touchdown. So with 2.16 to go in the third quarter, Westwood's on the board for the first time tonight. Well, they're fighting, Westwood's fighting at this point, both the, the, uh, the Hollison team and the clock. And, uh, you know, the Hollison, Hollison wants to get one more score here and they'll be in good shape. But Westwood could be in good shape too if they get another score pretty quickly. So see how this, how this works out. Extra point is up and no good. So Westwood, after the Holliston fumble, goes 40, yard, 40 yards. Shamar, Shamar Hall going in from one yard out for his third touchdown of the season. The Panther lead is cut from, to 27 to six. So three A little momentum for the uh, Wolverines yeah. right now. Now the job is to the offense to come and uh, counterpunch yep. that score. Yeah, you want to pick up. Each team wants to pick up for the other here. And uh, that Hollis in defense, I mean, you know you weren't going to go all night with negative yardage uh, rushing. Um, but boy, oh boy, they they gave up that, that touchdown. But they, they really have um, played exceptionally well. And that was a short field, too. Well, it was really Jake Plaff doing it with his legs yeah. right there. I mean, he was scrambling for his for his life, and then he picked up 30 yards to get him first and goal. Yeah, and Kevin Lyons on that on the defensive side of the ball was just really immense in, in on, on almost every tackle. So Gimblet and Nash are the deep backs. Brian Gary, number 14, and number 21, Tristan Benson, are the up backs. Hmm. Uh, kind of watching the ball here. Up, up a little bit straight. I wonder. Let's see Looks what like they're lined up for an onside Slightly kick. Onside. <clears throat> and they punch it through. <laughs> and they got it. You can tell. You can tell it was an onside. And Westwood with the recovery. Yeah, we. What you want to do is, re if you're looking for an onside kick, read the ball, read the football. If that football is up straight, he's not trying to, he's not trying to kick that deep. He's trying to kick something, something onside or something shallow. And uh, they did it. I thought the ball was going to go out of bounds because he, he kicked it pretty hard and took a big bounce at first. Uh, I, I think one of, of the Panthers that was trying to rush to the point of attack got there but wasn't able to corral it and it bounced off of him to Westwood. So like I said, you know, if Hollison would get the ball and go in and score, it'd probably put this game away. But if they don't and Westwood scores quickly, we get a game. Well, right now, Westwood's got an opportunity to make this a ball game. And they're going to test that uh, Hollison defense again for a second time in, in a row. So the ball at the Holliston 46. Plaff with Hall behind him, hands it to Hall, left side. Picks up three. Clock running now under two minutes. It was 1.55 left to go in the third quarter. Actually give him four yards, so second and six. This play is probably going to be a pass, I would think. Colin Fay in the game. Oh, Hand no. off to Fay. He goes left side, turns the corner, gets away from a couple of Panthers, finally pushed down along the left sideline, but a big gain, 20-plus yards for Fay. Yeah, I thought that would probably be a pass, only because it seemed to go into the running well quite often here. And... Uh, I thought that maybe to, to break it up a little bit, but they didn't need to with that run right there. And uh, they found something over there on that left side that they like. And they got a timeout on the field.
Double tight end set for Westwood. Hand off to Faye, hits the left side, flag flies from the defensive backfield. Yeah, this will be a holding call, and this is uh, going to stop this drive a little bit. Maybe that's the little thing that Westwood had found. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. If it was, the uh, referees just found it, too. If you can't beat him, hold him. Clock stop with 38 seconds to go. And the Wolverines finally uh, crossing that century mark on offense. They have 101 yards total offense. And they got 60 yards here just in the second half. Yeah. So they back up the Wolverines 10 yards for a second down and 20, or first down and 20. 19 seconds, clock's running. Might be the last play of the third quarter. Plaff fakes it to Faye, puts it up, down the sidelines. And a nice catch inside the 10 yard line by number two, John Hannon. And it's going to be first and goal for Westwood as they start the fourth quarter. But at the end of the third, Panthers 26, Westwood six, 27, but Westwood 6. First and goal, handoff to Hall, and he is hauled down. Well, Mulvaney got through that time. He came through on the Number blitz four. again. He, he just keeps blitzing and blitzing, trying, trying to break that, uh, that offensive line. And right there, he did a nice job of it. So loss on the play, or no gain on the play. Second and goal from the five. They bring another linebacker. They need to bring another tight end again in. Plaff looking to pass, and he's running for his life. Turns it back. Fires oh, that's into it. the corner, but nobody's there. Nobody's there. All right, but he's outside. He got he's outside, outside the numbers. The, yeah. Outside the box. The tackle box. That'll bring up third down and goal for the five, from the five. Good job by the Panther defense. They had great pressure on Plaff and good coverage in the end zone. Plaff is doing his best impression of Brett Favre, yeah. <laughs> sort of making it up as he goes. Well, he's dangerous when he gets out of that pocket. I actually thought he had the corner. I thought he was going to turn it, but uh, the Halston player came up and was having none of that. So receivers split to both sides. Two tight ends. Colin Fay in the backfield. Third down and goal from the five. They hand it to Fay. Play strung out, caught from behind. David Harding, number 51. And that brings up fourth down and goal. Let's see what's going to happen if Coach Pindell is going to roll the dice. I think he pretty much has to at this point. Well, he really has no choice. He needs a touchdown. I mean, he's three, three uh, possessions away. A field goal really doesn't do him any good at all. Looks like the Westwood went to a play that had worked a couple of times with Faye going to the left, but Holliston really strung that out well. Yeah, and they gotta, they got to control the outside here, both the left and right sides. Here come the Panthers. Plaff steps up. Chase from the pocket and a big hit in the backfield. The ball comes loose. Westwood recovers, but the Panthers are going to turn it over on downs. Well, over on downs. not only they turn it over on downs, but instead of having the ball down around the five-yard line now, they get it up around the 15-yard line. That was that was a big sack, and uh, uh, I guess it was a fumble off of the sack. And uh, that just brought that just brought Halston about 10 yards closer to uh, their goal line. So even the defense gets wow. in on moving the ball for the offense. Yeah. Wow. What a play. Talk about pinning your ears back and letting them go. The Panthers just. And, and what happened? Off. What happened there is Halston blitzed off the off the right hand side. They brought somebody in off the right hand side, and the 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 back picked him up. But Plaff saw him and couldn't get around him, so he had to turn around and come back, and that's where Holliston finished him off. Holliston and War. The pitch is to Ibbotson. 
He's tripped up at the line of scrimmage for no gain or short gain. See where they mark it. Gain of one, second and nine. They've done a pretty good job containing the, the war up to the outside, but not off tackle. If they Hollis can get inside off tackle and then cut to the outside, that seems to be a way they can make some plays. Not in that quarterback. Pitches to Ibbotson, right side. He's got a few more yards this time. It's going to bring up a third down and four. It, it's see, long four. And see, Tom, that's exactly what they did there. They didn't. He didn't take it all the way outside. He came inside where that blocking was off the tackle, between the tackle and the guard. Balls at the Panther 20. Coach Kiley calls for a spread offense as Arvanitis comes back in. So Billy Nash splits to the left. Naughton is tight to the left. Topher Ryan tight to the right with the Zindelet split to the right. Arvanitis on the draw play, sees a little room, but it closed up quickly. He is going to be short of a first down. He needed to get to the 25. A fourth down and a yard. And Coach Kiley sends out the war yep, offense. He's going to go to war. He wants to win it right here with seven minutes and 38 seconds to go. He's got the clock on his side after that stop of Westwood. And Naughton on the quarterback sneak drives forward for a Panther first down. Now, there's two reasons you're able to do that. One is you have great confidence in that, that, uh, that offense, especially that offensive line. Two is you have tremendous confidence in your defense because if you don't make it, your defense is going to stop them down here. And the way those two teams have been playing tonight, both sides of the ball, Coach Kiley has great confidence in it. You know, and So that was a very calculated gamble on uh, Coach Kiley's part. First and 10 at the Panther, 28. Again, they go on the quarterback sneak. And Naughton keeping his feet. Play the whistle, guys. This is good for Hollis. You know, if they keep banging, <laughs> taking, taking 15 to 20 seconds off the clock every time they run the ball and then get the 25 second also on top of that, it's going to run this clock down. It's, it's right now coming up on 635 left to go in this ball game. Hollis and up 27 to 6. Second and seven. We're down to six minutes and 29 seconds. Clock running. Panthers up 27 to six. Look at that defense. There's nobody defending the, the back offensive defensive backfield. And there's the pass play. And out is Topher Ryan with the yep. catch to the Westwood 45-yard line. And that's what I mean. There was nobody defending that. They, somebody caught him coming out. A defender caught Topher coming out. But uh, nice pass by Henry Norton. Nice catch by Topher Ryan. Gives him great field position. Eats up more time off the clock. Hollison remains in the lead, 27 to six. Good call there, Jay. So they set the ball for the first down. Clock running, and we're under six minutes to go. And right now, unless Westwood starts taking timeouts, you know, Hollison. led on the right, Ibbotson on the left. Inside handle to, to Ibbotson. He's got some room. Splits a couple of defenders. He's inside the 20-yard line. Inside the 15 for a first down. Normally what happens is it's very tough for a defense to see what's happening in that defensive backfield, in that uh, offensive backfield on the wall of defense. But what happened that time was uh, Holliston's offense kind of gave away the play to the left. And, Hall and Westwood reacted to that, and then they reversed it back to the right, and that gave uh, Dylan Ibbotson a chance to uh, cut off tackle and get in there and uh, get some good yardage. So first and 10, ball at the 17, pitch to Ibbotson, works his way down the line. Bring me up, Don. Cuts it inside to the 10-yard line. 
And with that, guys, Dylan Ibbotson going over 100 yards in the night. He's got 103. So a little bit short of Mike Godfrey's 256, but the century mark for number 22 is a good night. And that's all we really care about at this point is that clock ticking and that scoreboard uh, not changing for Westwood. Second down and six. We're down on a four and a half minutes to go. Inside handoff to Dezindle it. And he's got the first down. It's going to be first and goal. So again, that counter play working, yeah. but this time to the other side. That's a nice play. So first and goal from the four yard line for Holliston as they have answered answered Westwood who drove all the way down to the four yard line of Holliston. Holliston stopping him on fourth and goal with the sack and now Holliston's driven back 90 yards the other way. Not and under center takes the snap goes forward. Touchdown Panthers. Henry Naughton with his second touchdown of the season, his fourth career touchdown, and the Panthers are up 33 to six. Well, sometimes when you try to describe something, you know, you don't want to keep using the same adjectives and same things over and over again. But I'll tell you right now, that offensive line has just been sensational tonight. And now the running game, the running backs have, have done their job. And uh, as Carlos said, Dylan Ibbotson up over 100 yards rushing. Great job by the Holliston. Kick is up and good by Connor Mulvaney. And with 3.44 to go in the game, the Panthers are in control 34 to six. Well, nice job there by Holliston. The defense stopped him on the, that end and then uh, Holliston got in the war offense and took it right, right downfield. And, it did a nice job. You know, in, in Westwood, like I said, you know, earlier, they, it's not that they're playing that badly. I just think what, uh, Hollison has just really been playing that well. I mean, I don't know. You, it's it's kind of tough. Not, you know, you're trying not to be a homer when you're doing these games, but you look at this thing and you say, boy, oh, boy, where were they? Where are they? What are they doing wrong? You know, a couple things here and a couple things there. Lost ball here, lost ball there. A couple of penalties, but that's been it. I mean, Hollison has just been dominant. No, they got to get, you know, the... Third quarter trend. Two games we've done, both third quarters, two turnovers. Yeah, yeah. Well, harder. But you, you Holliston gotta, recovered from both from both situations to well, put the game away. Right. You got to come out of out of that halftime locker room focused. Field it on the 15 yard line by number 22. He gets it across the 20. And with 3:31 to go, the Panthers. Going to get a chance to, I think if they can stop Westwood here, they've, they'll get the ball back to run the clock out. Westwood's, Westwood put up a little bit of a fight there after, yeah, after, they did. after scoring after the plap it, run it, and, and then getting the, the second turnover, but one has, wasn't able to capitalize. Well, you give them a lot of credit too. They come out there, they're down 27 to nothing and, um, and they come out and, uh, you know, they they take the ball over and score. Onside kick, great call. Get the onside kick, take it down. But Hollison was able to stop that drive. And then Hollison was able to take it down and uh, score for a 34-6 lead. 3-0-1 left to go in this ball game. Blaff straight drop. Nice. Puts it up. But uh, number 26, sophomore Christian Schneelock there. That was that, coverage. that was a really nice job. You know, with, with, with you, what you're taught to do back there is you can either read the receiver's eyes or the receiver's hands. You know, when he turns his head, if his hands start going up, you see his eyes getting wide. Then that's when that's when you got to turn your head to know where the ball is. And uh, Christian did a nice job there. He, he stayed with him, man, man to man, right with him, and uh, was able to make the turn right at the right time, so the uh, offensive guy couldn't catch the ball. So 
The second down and 10 for Westwood. Hand off to Hall. And he is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Number 56, Ryan Cahill, first off of that pile. Well, about 150 seconds left to go in this ball game, Tom. And uh, Holliston has just been uh, really, really good tonight. But down under two and a half minutes to go. Guys, here's probably the stat of the night. Average yards gained on first down, 9.2 for the Panthers, only 1.9 for Westwood. Wow. Again, good coverage by Gimblet and Naughton. So, you know, you, you dig into those stats a little bit, Carlos, that, you, that you're giving us, and, and what you hear, what you're saying is, is that Hollison has a lot of second and shorts, which opens up a lot of their offensive playbook, and Westwood has a lot of second and third and longs, which allows the Hollison defense to get really aggressive and come in and uh, blitz on them. I think he, I think at this point of the game, it, whatever happens here, Hollison's probably just going to go in the victory position and take a knee. So third down, fourth, fourth down, down and ten. Gimblet drops back to receive the kick. Nice high kick. And Westwood just lets, lets it roll. Inside the 30 to the 28. Panthers will take over with a minute 33 to go. Well, Jay, a nice homecoming. Yeah, nice job. Panthers come off with the win. This and is the uh, 40th anniversary win for in celebration of your, <laughs> your uh, senior year. Always great to beat the beat the Wolverines. Yeah, and in, in the last three games, Hollison has not only beat them, but beaten them quite handily. And, and the fact of the matter is, you know, a few years ago, Coach Kiley's record against uh, Westwood was the only is really the only team I think he had a uh, any kind of decent losing record to, and he's catching up really quickly. Well, that. There are only three teams that the Panthers have played more than three times that they have a losing record to. Westwood's one of them, all time. Lincoln Sudbury and Whalen are the other two. Well, well those are two uh, dual county league teams. That's who I played against yeah. when I played football. We didn't play in the TVL. So down under a minute to go. Yeah, this is running time now, so. So the Panthers next week will be down in midfield to face mm -hmm. the Warriors. They're locked up 7-7 with the Ashland Clockers at halftime. We oh started boy. early, so they we're a little ahead of them. Well, I called Ashland and told them to soften them up for us. We'll go down there <laughs> and take care of it. Yeah, that should be a good game. So that'll do it, the final knee. We should see the teams line up for some handshakes right now and a well-deserved victory on homecoming night by the Holliston Panthers in their new uniforms. And a 34 to six winning over the Westwood Wolverines. Just a great overall performance by, by the Panthers tonight. Yeah, the coaching staff's gonna be really happy tonight. Not a, not a lot to be upset with. A, a couple of lost ball in, in, uh, here and there and uh, a, a couple of penalties. But other than that, Tom, they, they really played very well. Very, very disciplined, focused, aggressive on both sides of the ball. So the chase for the TVL crown is underway and the Panthers strike the first blow with a win tonight. And they'll be down in Medfield for another important game against the Warriors, a team that upset them on homecoming last year right. on this field. So Holliston yeah. thinking about a little revenge next week. That'll be good for them. I want to thank everyone who, who helped us tonight. Um, Owen, Owen Ratcliffe and, uh, and Steve Hedrick down there on, on the field. And uh, the cameras, of course, Lisa with the big camera upstairs, Don Cronin, who uh, down in the... Down in the control truck along with uh, Bruce Guilfoy and of course Los now we're going to turn it over I think to Carlos and uh, you know in a minute here we'll get it get it over to him and we also um, want to thank you Tom <laughs> happy 40th anniversary 40th homecoming class of 78 yeah represent here yeah 
So this this is a game that uh, Hollison needed and they and they took. And now it's Los and the final lowdown. Thanks guys. The final score from Comedian Field, all Panthers. They win this one 34 to 6 over the rival Westwood Wolverines. 343 total yards of offense for the Panthers tonight. It was almost all on the ground, 261 rushing yards. Uh, we're looking at 82 passing yards for the Panthers through the air. On the other side of the ball, Westwood, 115 total yards of offense, 70 yards passing, 44, 45 yards rushing. Panthers were one of six on third down. Westwood was three for 12. And Westwood actually dominated the time of possession tonight, 26 minutes and five seconds to 17 minutes and 55 seconds for the Panthers. Matt Arvinitis, quarterback for the Panthers, was four of six for 59 yards. No touchdowns, but no interceptions as well. The uh, leading rusher for the Panthers tonight, probably the player of the game, Dylan Ibbotson, 103 yards rush, uh, carrying the football. That's 11 carries. He had a long rush of 29 yards. He had a rushing touchdown as well. Uh, Tristan Benson also had a really good game, 62 yards on nine carries, including another touchdown. Anthony Zindelit had two rushing touchdowns and 36 yards to go on top of that. Leading receiver for the Panthers was also Anthony. He had 25 yards. For Westwood, quarterback Jake Pfaff was 5 of 15 for 70 yards. No touchdowns, no intercept interceptions. But the Panthers did a really good job of uh, limiting this Westwood rushing offense. Leading rusher was Shamar Hall. Shamar Hall. He had 48 yards on 10 carries, including a touchdown. Uh, but everybody else was really kept out of the game. Jake Pfaff uh, under, uh, he had negative yards rushing as did Dylan Mahoney and Dom Huff. Defensively for the Panthers, leading all tacklers was Mitch Gimblet. He had seven recorded tackles and uh, Kevin Lyons also had a really good game. He had four tackles and a quarterback hurry or two. For more stats and information on the Holliston Panthers, you can follow us on Twitter at HCatFootball and that's the lowdown. Okay, Los, thank you very much. Once again, your final score tonight, Collison 34, Westwood 6. We'll see you next week down in midfield. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.